For this question, it says that we should calculate the concentration of a sulfuric acid solution if it takes 40 centimeters cubed of sulfuric acid to neutralize 46.7 centimeters cubed of 0.364 mole per dm cubed sodium hydroxide solution. Before we get into our steps, let's just identify all the information that the question has given us. I'm going to highlight our standard with green, and I'm going to highlight our analyte with pink. So remember our standard. Remember our standard is one with an accurately known concentration and volume. So the standard is the solution which the standard is a solution that gives the concentration and the volume and that would be our sodium hydroxide so we have 46.7 and in this question we only have the volume of our sulfuric acid so we know that's going to be our analyte Step one says we should write the balanced equation for the reaction. So we have a sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. And we have sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH. We have an acid and an alkali. And whenever we have an acid and an alkali or an acid and a base, products would be a salt which is formed when the metal replaces hydrogen so we would have sodium sulfate and water to balance we will ensure that we have the same number of each atom on either side when balancing we can leave the hydrogen and oxygen last so we can start with sodium and we see that we'll have one sodium atom on the reactant side but we have two on the product side so we'll put a two in front of sodium hydroxide next we can balance sulfate which is the so4 so we have one on this side one on the other side and yes sulfate contains oxygen but we know it's part of the sulfate ion so just keeping the sulfate together then we can balance our hydrogens. We have two hydrogens right here because the two in front goes for everything in the compound. So two plus two, four hydrogens on our reactant side, but we only have two on the product side. So we need to put that two in front. And finally, we can balance oxygen. Remember, we already accounted for sulfate. So now we have two oxygens on the reactant side and the two on the product side so our equation is now balanced step two says we should find the number of moles of our standard remember we highlighted our standard with green earlier and we know that's the standard because it has both the concentration and the volume so we're going to find the moles of sodium hydroxide and remember to find the moles it's going to be concentration times volume concentration is 0.364 moles per dm cubed and we need to multiply that by the volume what we're given is 46.7 centimeters cubed but we always have to convert because the unit for concentration is mole per dm cubed so we need a dm cubed here to match as well to convert from centimeters cubed to dm cubed, we divide by a thousand. <laughs> so that's 0 0.0467. Coming, Kaylin. And that gives us 
0.017. Step three says that we should use the balanced equation to determine the Mohr ratio. We use a coefficient, which are these numbers in front, to tell how many moles of each reactant will react. So it tells us that one mole of sulfuric acid reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide. We get the number of moles from the coefficient. There isn't any number in front of sulfuric acid, so that means one mole. And we have a two in front of sodium hydroxide, so that means two moles. In step 4, we should find the moles of the analyte, and we do that by using the mole ratio. We don't know how many moles of sulfuric acid we have, but we do know how many moles of sodium hydroxide reacted. Cross multiply, and this would tell us that 1 times 0 0.017 is equal to 2 times x which means that x is equal to 0 0.017 divided by 2 and when we solve that we'll find out that the moles of sulfuric acid is equal to 0 0.0085 we can always write this in standard form as 8.5 times 10 to the negative 3 moles once we have the number of moles of the analyte, we can use that to find any other information about that analyte because we know the mole is a link to everything else. We could find the number of particles, we could find the mass, or we can find the concentration. And this question did ask us to find concentration. So our step 5 says we need to determine the concentration of our analyte and we'd use our formula which says molar concentration is equal to mole over volume which makes sense because the unit says mole per dm cubed or mole divided by dm cubed we know dm cubed is the unit for volume so it's basically saying mole divided by volume the unit for concentration already tells us that we're dividing mole by volume the final thing we'll do is to plug this information in the formula. We know the number of moles, 0 0.0085, and the volume given is 40 centimeters cubed, which we have to convert And that gives us a concentration of 0 0.21 moles per dm cubed.